this is blue. He would have had two horns, like so. This tooth hole in here from a serrated tooth tore off half his half his uh, face, half his skull cup, and in here. is the remains of a brachiopod seashell. It's a fossil seashell. Blue is a 180 million year old reptile, an early raptor. I believe he is a dramaeosaur, one of the smallest, earliest of the raptor family. Here's a fossil here, right beside it. Now this piece of fossil does not match up with the skull cap. So these are parts of two different animals. Now this boulder, this boulder in itself is from the KV formation here in St. John. It's 180 million years old. It's all Jurassic material. And, uh, well, this is my hand. It, it has an 8 inch spread, so you know blue wasn't that big. The neck piece that went on here was donated to St. John the Baptist back in 2018. Um, there's too much sunlight and shadow everywhere. You can't really can't really tell. But the complete uh, the complete skull cap isn't here. It's like the, it's like a, a little bit of the snout is missing. And that's that brachiopod fossil seashell. Fossil seashell. A Jurassic period clam. I'm guessing it's clam, but it could be oyster too. I, I'm not sure. I wasn't there at the time. I'm glad I wasn't. Yep. I'm sort of, uh, I'm glad that I met up with, with Blue, and I'm glad that a child very recently named this reptile blue after named it blue after the reptile after the reptile <laughs> raptor in Jurassic Park. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty it's pretty bright. Sunny, nice. There's not too much movement in the harbor on Tug. Maybe there's a boat coming in from way out there somewhere. And there's Partridge Island. And over here we got the Bay Ferries. I think they're getting ready. I hear the engine and it's, it seems to be moving. Yeah, they'll make another run to Nova Scotia. And we got blue. Looking west. Yeah, I can't really. 
Now this skin here is fossil skin. It does absorb water. If you put this under a microscope, you would find fossil skin cells. That neck piece that came off the back of the skull cap went out about about that far. Anyone that put that under a microscope will see skin, reptile skin. And there used to be hairs in that skin too, before time, tides, washed it out. And we've got some damage right there. That's rock damage. Yeah. Well, that's a... Uh, can't get yeah blue blue was a pack hunter there were other raptors with him and remember this was a dromaeosaur he was very small uh, I believe dromaeosaurs weighed in around 30 pounds could run maybe as fast as a coyote and this fossil remains right here. Oh, I have to fix this. This fossil part here belongs to the animal that these dromaeosaurs were going after. They were kind of caught in the maelstrom, though. They were caught in a caught in a, in a storm and died. And, well, for for blue, it was a predator, another predator, because that is a serrated. That's a hole from a serrated tooth. At this, I want to get a closer look at this dinosaur skin. Now, do you see it? That is reptile skin, fossil reptile skin. It is 180 million years old. I hope the children study this. I'm sure they have already, because I've done quite a few fossil dinosaur videos, fossil dinosaur skin videos. The reason this skin here is dark, it's absorbed water. This, the skin cells of that still absorb water. That's how well preserved. I had to that focus now. There. That's, <coughs> that is how well preserved that fossil is. You can scrape that skin, put it under a uh, uh, a micron, uh, micron electroscope, or uh, a microscope, electron microscope, and you will see individual skin cells. This is one of the greatest finds in St. John history as far as fossils go. Why, you, why the uh, New Brunswick Museum and other people concerned about 
the property of Tin Can Beach would keep this quiet? I don't know. It's a great mystery. But politics make strange bedfellows. Now, over here we have, looks like loons. That's the only dinosaurs running around now, are loons and geese and sparrows. There's uh, some shipping activity. Yes, I'm sure that little Dramiosaur would, if it could come to life, would get pretty freaked out by our 20th century life. They wouldn't know what a ferry or tugboat looked like. And I probably wouldn't be standing here long. I would be running away. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I will see you on.